Hello, let's discuss some strategies specific to the verbal section. As far as the verbal and the reasoning section is concerned in CAT, it is 30 questions and 70 minutes. Before we actually discuss what the section looks like, it does not make great sense to move into a strategy. The section last year from whatever the feedback that we could get out of multiple slots has gotten wonderfully standardized. The 30 questions safely distributed into 21 questions of verbal ability and 9 questions of analytical or logical reasoning. Now that we are specifically discussing these 21 questions, it is also necessary that we know what the 9 questions of logical or analytical reasoning play a role of. Say for example, those 9 questions of analytical and logical reasoning are specifically into 4 sets and these sets more or less play the role of a mood changer or probably something that engages you into the paper. The remaining 21 questions of verbal ability are also more or less standardized if you consider CAT 2012 into picture. Approximately 9 to 10 questions are of reading comprehension which are safely divided into 3 RCs that is what you call reading comprehension as. These 3 RCs are followed either by 3 questions or 4 questions and a standard format was either a 3 plus 3 plus 3 or a 3 plus 3 plus 4. If we keep aside these 9 to 10 questions, there were 3 questions of para jumbles which were arranging the sentences to form a coherent paragraph. 3 questions were of logical continuation. If it's a logical continuation, we have to find out the sentence that continues a given paragraph either logically through an idea, concept or tense or some other kind of a logical continuation which you can figure out. One new pattern type which was found in the last two online cats was a logical discontinuity. It was easy but it was new and therefore there was a set of an audience which did find it challenging. Logical discontinuity had four sentences in it out of which we had to find out that one sentence which does not fit into the coherence when the remaining three are put in in the form of a paragraph. That brings us to 9 to 10 questions of reading comprehension, 3 of para jumbles, 3 logical, discontinu three logical continuity, 1 logical discontinuity and after that approximately 2 questions of grammar which were either in the form of sentence correction or error detection. One to two questions were of vocabulary. Now this vocabulary though was not directly asked as vocabulary, it was either in the form of passage completion or in the form of a fill in the blanks. That other question could have been analogies. Apart from that, the one or two questions that were left were either of word usages or of phrasal verbs. With this kind of a paper pattern, what comes out very clearly is that these 90 questions can logically be separated into three particular things. One is logical reasoning of 9, reading comprehension of 9 or 10 and the remaining 10 to 12 of fast food or the kind of questions which we can claim as something which can be solved in around 1 to 1 and a half minutes per question. Given this kind of a structure, now it has become for the fact that it is predictable, we can go in with good amount of homework and a strategy and can sort of be at least 90% sure of hitting the strategy spot on in the paper. Forthcoming, we'll be looking at strategies on how to approach this paper. Strategy number one. This one will be more so for people who, ha who don't have a really strong reading base. You know, those will always be running for a cover in terms of this section. What will they do is try to balance off or alternate between analytical and logical reasoning section and will still try to balance off this reading so that their mood stays intact during the paper. Such people 
should go ahead with this kind of a strategy wherein they first start off with an RC because they are fresh. The moment first RC is done, they should ideally be picking up one logical reasoning set. Now that changes their mood and brings them back to freshness. Try another RC again, go back to another AR set. So in that case of alternating between an RC and an AR set, what will happen is that logically you would have formed a set of say 15 to 16 minutes, 10 to 11 minutes ideally for an RC, 4 to 5 minutes for an AR set. Now that means alternating the same thing three times would mean that we would be sitting on 45 minutes completed. We would be sitting on 3 out of the 4 AR sets completed and we would be sitting on 3 RCs completed. It won't be so hunky dory per se but if we try to move in a 45 minutes could get extended to a 50 which is a fair deal. At the end of 50 odd minutes or in the range of 45 to 50 minutes we would be safely sitting on 10 questions of RCs and 9 questions of AR which is 19 done. We have one set of an AR which is left and we have 12 questions of the other part which we termed as fast food. In that also the intensity that is required in solving a para jumble question and a logical continuation question is far higher than what really is needed from a logical discontinuity, phrasal verbs, sentence correction error detection, analogies or fill in the blanks. There also what we can do is that pick these para jumble questions or logical continuation questions, keep them little spaced out and in the gaps address those questions which have lesser intensity demand from you. So what happens is that those questions on an average get catered to around a minute to minute and a half per question. We were left with 12 so we are left with around 18 to 19 minutes for completion. It is natural that you wouldn't get a couple of questions because probably you don't know the phrasal verb which has been asked or probably you are not in sync with the density of the paragraph as far as logical continuation is asked. But these are very natural. What will happen at the end of the 70 minutes is that you would have safely attempted somewhere close to 27 questions out of 30. If hitting this kind of a ratio reaches where you are attempting 90% of the paper with at least 85% or 80% of an accuracy, you can safely target a reasonable percentile which should give you a call from the top 10 to top 15 colleges. Sectional strategies are fine but just to ensure that you are working on it properly, you put in at least 5 to 6 such sectional tests where you don't take the full length mocks. But you take up the sectional tests, examine your performance and then you slowly grow on your strategy. This strategy might not fit in everybody but you need to work on your strengths and find out one for yourself. Happy practicing.